G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Hey, today is a special Flatsoid 11 by proxy. Flatsoid's Yes Man, Michael Kahn, made a video showing just how much he knows about wind farms, just by standing near one. Now this started a few weeks ago when Kahn declared all submarine wind towers are just optical, and if only we knew just where they were, we would see that the Earth is not a globe. Well, take it away Kahn, old boy. Planet Peterson. Flat Zoe were covering it last week and he brought up this picture of these wind turbines and we're like, look, hidden, earth curve. Well, it is, it's hidden, as we cannot see it. And it went so much that that made me want to cover this, but it went backwards and forwards. I had where, where's Wally, where he made some comments. Well, more like helpful tips, not just comments. And it was arrogant attitude. Arrogant prick. To this Wally that's driven me to do this, you know. So as we can see, Khan was keen for me to help him understand how to go about analysing wind farm videos. Telling me what's what, what I can see and what I can't see in my own country. When I go on holiday every year to the coast, I can see a wind farm and I observe them with my camera. Despite being located in Australia, it was nice of Khan to insist I help him from so far away. I guess he knows that I have no wind farms nearby and he's very happy to share his with me. And this is just an optical effect that, that, that there's, we know there's no earth curve, we know there's no globe. But it's just arrogance of Wally and his indoctrination and, you know, so up his self, you know, so I thought I'd... Um, cover this. I've got my own observation from a wind farm in Skegness on the east coast. Similar effect. Look like they're hidden. Oh, very good, Khan. So nice of you to invite me to peer review your observations and analysis. And yes, I bet we find out that they are indeed hidden by a physical curve, and that is just what we see optically when we look at it. So let's have a look at my own footage and we'll go from there. Great! Hope you have a nice large focal length zoom on a tripod and provide some nice clear, not at all grainy images for us to really get into. This is footage from Skegness Beach looking at uh, Lane and in a dowsing wind farm. Yep, just another great video to analyse. Good on you, Khan. And then behind that there's Lincolnshire wind farm. Um, I'll just play it to a decent spot. Um, where I can take a screenshot so you can see the supposed hidden turbine. Supposed? Oh, I bet we find it's actually hidden, but into it, Khan. And also pay attention to where um, rig is because that'll give some idea of direction. Oh great, from those six turbines and the substation, we can work out exactly where you were on the beach and the angle at which you were observing from. Oh, and a few really far away ones, like gorillas in the mist. Uh. Khan, you would find that pre-focusing and locking the focus before you start, would have stopped the camera hunting for focus all the time. I bet you know that, but it happens to me often. In the heat of the moment, we just forget the simple tips that pros don't forget. There is noticeably a rather lot of very distant turbines, hey Khan? That far away wind farm must be a big one. Right, so I'll take a screenshot there. Right, so as you can see, um, I've I've had to just adjust exposure and brightness a bit so you can see it a bit more clear clearly because it was quite murky. Yep, standard practice. Good job. Um, and there you've got your wind turbines that appear that blades are touching ocean which would in Baldur's cases point 
and say, oh, look, it's hidden by Earth Curvature. Oh, look, Khan, it's hidden by Earth Curvature. Oh, you just said that, didn't you? Sorry, mate. So, as promised, now we're going to have a look and see why this is not the case. So, first of all, we've got to try and find out which um, turbine we're looking at. Um, so, I was at this side up here looking at... And we watched boat sailing from substation and it went past three wind turbines and then I stopped it just shortly after um, third wind turbine. Oh, Khan, if you had panned the camera from the green line to the red line, you would have counted around 20 turbines. So I'm sorry to say that where you're thinking you are, you are not. You're in the wrong place. Now, Flatsoid really should have caught that mistake, but he didn't. Um, and as we can see, there's two turbines. One's clearly appears higher than other. So I've numbered them one in red and two in blue. So we're looking at number one in red and number two in blue. Okay, we know you are not looking where you think you are, but aside from that, there is another bigger or should I say, smaller issue here. One I thought the guru of photography, aka Flatsoid, would have caught and corrected straight away. But we will let Khan spell out his case first, just because that is a more peer review -y sort of thing to do. I mean, it's more fun. Um, the blue being the furthest one away. Blue being the furthest one away, and it appears lower than turbine uh, number one. So, We'll be using this one. So now we need to work out how far away that um, wind turbine is from me viewing it at beach. So we know, because like I said, pay attention to it, substation is, we know we're looking at Lincolnshire Wind Farm and we're not looking at Lynn and is in a dowsing uh, wind farm. So let's have a look at where... Um, distance from shore Lincolnshire Wind Farm supposedly is. Um, so Lincolnshire Wind Farm is distance from shore eight kilometers or five miles. So we know this starts at five miles. Five miles is probably the closest distance. You are viewing at an angle, so it will be further, but well, you're not looking at the right ones anyway, so let's continue. But obviously, that wind turbine's not at five miles, so we need to work out how much further than five miles we're looking at to that turbine. So if we go back to um, this, it tells you um, with a spacing of approximately 500 metres. So we've got five miles plus one two three four four times 500 is 2000 meters um oh i hate to be a wet blanket here khan but you did make a slight oops there count the gaps and you will see that there is three not four that means three by half a kilometer is 1.5 kilometers not two but as i said you are still looking at the wrong turbines so it matters little anyway but it is funny so i mentioned it 2000 meters in miles is 1.24 miles so we're looking at a distance of 56.24 miles to that furthest wind turbine so if if um, it appears that blades are touching the surface at ocean, then we need to know how much of that turbine's hidden. Um, and I found I found this study by um, University of Leeds. It's called Offshore Wind Farms Could Be More Risky for Organics Than Previously Thought. It's an environmental study on impact of wind farms on wildlife. Um, it was pre previously thought that gannets, which breed in the UK between April and September each year, generally flew well below the minimum height of 22 metres above sea level swept by the blades of offshore wind turbines. So all wind farms in UK, of course the UK, have a min minimum clearance of 22 metres. 
So for them wind turbine blades, that furthest wind turbine, to look like they're touching the surface, they need to be hidden by 22 metres. Oh, Khan, you don't need to go looking at the birds to find out the height of the rotor. You had all the information you needed on the screen. It was a 100 metre hub height and 120 metre diameter. That's 100 minus 60 equals 40. Just saying, it's 40, not 22. But, oh, hang on, that's going to make it worse for the globe, isn't it? Oh, well, um, I don't delete inconvenient facts. I let them run and see where it takes us, shall we? So, 22 metres is 72.1785 feet. So, we've all been told, haven't we, that, you know, it's been measured accurately, this globe, for thousands of years, and it's got a set radius of 3959. So, going on them measurements, and using this earth curve calculator, I type in a viewer height of 6 feet, I'm 5 foot 8, I would... I was filming freehand, I weren't using a tripod, so I've rounded it up to six feet. And I've also rounded distance to furthest wind turbine to seven miles. It should be 6.124, I think, if I remember correctly. And it tells us that there should be a target hidden height of 10.6723 feet. Now we've got 72 feet a hidden turbine. That's 61 feet of extra earth curve. <laughs> this wind turbines appearing to be hidden by earth curve. It's a lot of rubbish. There's no such thing as earth curve. We don't live on a globe. Earth's a flat plane and these are optical effects. Okay, Khan, I heard you out and let me just say thanks for asking me for my help, mate. Now, Andrew Johnson, one of them, has been really helpful in identifying the turbines. Just to show how we started, let's look at the very first relatively clear image Khan gave us. The one with the substation in it. Now, one of the Andrew Johnsons and myself, we begin by following a line of sight from the substation to the pier. And we reckon that the towers beside the substation are ID28 and LS61. What you will also notice here is that you can see perspective in action. Doubling the distance halves the apparent heights of the towers that are the same size. So what AJ and I did was to get all the GPS Latin longs for all the turbines in all the wind farms on that section of coast. And the links are in the description as always. So now I copied and pasted all the Lat longs and IDs into a Google spreadsheet. And then I calculated the distance from Khan at the end of the pier to each turbine. And a big shout out to Andrew Johnson for pointing to where Khan was standing. That was a nice bit of sleuthing there, mate. That was a nice bit of sleuthing there, finding that little ring thing standing up in the water. Perfect. I also calculated the bearing or direction to each turbine. Then I sorted the sheet in ascending order of bearings. Then I looked and found the substation and all the towers of interest were right there just after it. Well, numbers can be beautiful and all, but they're not everyone's cup of tea. So I thought, why not make a panorama from the video so we can all really see the lay of the land. I mean, ocean. Next, I drew up a scale and placed all the towers on there at their azimuth angle. Then I lined that up under the panorama and voila, Robert is your mother's brother. They all lined up pretty good, even down to the two turbines in Khan's screen cap. The larger, closer one was on the left. That's brilliant. Now we know where all the turbines in the scene are, and we'll get back to this later. So let's go back and look at the screen capture image of Khan's, shall we? Now you guys seem to have forgotten something. Firstly, all turbines in this wind farm are the Siemens 3.6 megawatts and have a diameter of 120 meters and a hub height of 100 meters. In short, they're all identical. Now Khan is telling us that the wind turbines on the left of the frame are five miles out to sea, and the grey shadowy ones are the same make and model and physical size, and they're only 1.5 to 2 kilometres further out, so 9.5, 10 kilometres. Now Flatsoid, you self-proclaimed guru of photography and all things perspective based, please tell me what you see here. Pause and identify the elephant in the room. I mean, at sea. Oh, wow. That's called yep. forced perspective. 
This hand look big, but because it's close. This head far away. Hand smaller than head now. Oh no! You get it? Do you see it yet, flat side? Fortunately, Khan was wobbling that camera up and down, and now I know why. He was trying to capture the full size of the close turbines. Now, let me just add those same two turbines. We saw them just a few seconds earlier. and We'll put them on the left here. Wow, do you see it yet, Flatsoid? Khan? Look at the relative sizes. Now, these are the same height towers, remember? 100 meters to the hubs. So we need to be looking for target turbines that are more likely 40 kilometers away, not just nine or 10. As luck would have it, there is the Race Bank wind farm right there in the same line of sight, and it's around 30 to 40 kilometers away. Khan, these are the turbines you're looking for. Interestingly, you don't even need to know what turbines we're looking at to be able to debunk Khan's claim. Flatsoid, as Khan's mentor and peer reviewer, I'm holding you responsible for this atrocity of flat earth fail. You should have stopped it as soon as you saw the massive size difference. You should have known that Khan's assumptions were, you know, impossible. So what would you have me do now, Khan? The only way you can swing it is by pushing that furthest wind turbine further away, but mm -hmm. somebody'd have to prove that it's further than what I'd say. Okay then, now that I have my spreadsheet of azimuths, I can just add the race bank wind farm data. And well, would you look at that? two turbines appearing out of the mist of the data, right in the exact spot we need them. Seems what we were looking at were J01 and H02 at 37.7 and 36.8 kilometers away. And note how slightly further away the slightly smaller one is. Interesting. What did you do? And what did you identify them as, Khan? Oh, you didn't. You just guessed, didn't you? Well, I guess all that is needs to be done now is the Walter Bislin's amazing earth curve calculator. Let's plug in the numbers. And we see that we have about 65 meters hidden with a standard refraction day at that distance. Khan thought around 22 meters. And those turbines in the race bank uh, wind farm are Siemens 6 megawatts. They have a longer 77 meter blade on a 100 meter tower, I think. It's kind of hard to find the exact tower height data. It is very location specific and it varies a lot. Anyway, a day with a bit more than standard refraction would be all it would take to match them up perfectly. Well, there you have it. Khan debunked as he requested. It was not super easy, it was rather inconvenient, but I did it anyway, with the help of some of the many Andrew Johnstons around the place. Thanks guys. Don't have a lot of CNC fails this week. I just did this.